prayer for the 2022 national and local elections. Let us pray that the forthcoming national and local elections may truly reflect the will of the Lord who guides our nation. For every petition, let us pray together, Deliver us, Lord. Deliver us, Lord. From coercion, intimidation, violence, and terrorism, Deliver us, Lord. From dishonesty, lies, and all distortion of truth, Deliver us, Lord. From bribery, graft, and all conspiracy for fraud, Deliver us, Lord. From gullibility to the deceptive and blindness of perspective, Deliver us, Lord. From threats, intimidation, and perverse language, Deliver us, Lord. Now let our response be, Hear us, Lord. Hear us, Lord. That conscience may always be our ultimate norm, Hear us, Lord. That the common good may always be our highest goal, Hear us, Lord. That human dignity may be respected all the time, Hear us, Lord. That the poor and the weak may always have the priority, Hear us, Lord. That care for creation may never be ignored, Hear us, Lord. That solidarity may guide the path of peace and development, Hear us, Lord. That genuine fear of God and love of neighbors may guide those who seek public office, Hear us, Lord. Let us pray. Shepherd of souls and Savior of the nations, Politics is your gift to us, a call to serve others and grow in holiness. Guide our politics as you guide our lives. May our political engagement for voters and candidates bring glory to your loving name and help us grow in holiness forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us begin this Holy Eucharist by acknowledging our sins. Let us ask God's forgiveness. Let us entrust ourselves to God's merciful love. Have mercy on us, O Lord. For we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. We invoke your mercy in humble prayer, O Lord, that you may cause us, your servants, corrected by penance and schooled by good works, to persevere sincerely in your commands and come safely to the Paschal festivities. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once to your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, for they have become depraved. They have soon turned aside from the way I pointed out to them, making for themselves the molten calf and worshiping it, sacrificing to it and crying out, This is your God, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I see how stiff-necked this people is. Let me alone then, that my wrath may blaze up against them to consume them. Then I will make of you a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God, saying, Why, O Lord, should your wrath blaze up 
against your own people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with such great power and with so strong a hand. Why should the Egyptians say, with evil intent, he brought them out, that he might kill them in the mountains and exterminate them from the face of the earth? Let your blazing wrath die down. Relent in punishing your people. Remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and how you swore to them by your own self, saying, I will make your descendants as numerous as the scars, as the stars in the sky, and all this land that I promised. I will give your descendants as their perpetual heritage. So the Lord relented in the punishment he had threatened to inflict on his people. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Our fathers made a calf in Horeb and adored a molten image. They exchanged their glory for the image of a grass-eating bullock. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. They forgot the God who had saved them, who had done great deeds in Egypt, wondrous deeds in the land of Ham, terrible things in the Red Sea. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Then he spoke of exterminating them, but Moses, his chosen one, withstood him in the breach to turn back his destructive wrath. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Jews, If I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is not true. But there is another who testifies on my behalf. And I know that the testimony he gives on my behalf is true. You sent emissaries to John, and he testified to the truth. I do not accept human testimony, but I say this so that you may be saved. He was a burning and shining lamp, and for a while you were content to rejoice in his light. But I have testimony greater than John's. The works that the Father gave me to accomplish, these works that I perform testify on my behalf that the Father has sent me. Moreover, the Father who sent me has testified on my behalf. But you have never heard his voice nor seen his form and you do not have his word remaining in you because you do not believe in the one whom he has sent. You search the scriptures, but you think that you have eternal life through them. Even they testify on my behalf. But you do not want to come to me to have life. I do not accept human praise. Moreover, I know that you do not have the love of God in you. I came in the name of my Father, but you do not accept me. Yet if another comes in his own name, you will accept him. 
How can you believe when you accept praise from one another and do not seek the praise that comes from the only God? Do not think that I will accuse you before the Father. The one who will accuse you is Moses, in whom you have placed your hope. For if you had believed Moses, you would have believed me, because he wrote about me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, our first reading today is about a crisis that arose as the Israelites were journeying in the desert. While Moses was on the holy mountain conversing with God, the Israelites collapsed into idolatry. They created a molten calf and worship that molten calf as their God. They created a God for themselves. And because of this, the Lord told Moses, go down immediately because I have seen how stiff-necked this people is. Napakatigas ng kanilang ulo. And because of this, God wanted to punish the Israelites. In our gospel today, Jesus also had to deal with hard-headed and hard-hearted people. Mga taong matigas ang puso at matigas din ang ulo. Jesus presents several testimonies, several witnesses about himself, his identity. Jesus presents to them several proofs that he indeed is the Son of God, the Father himself, the Scriptures, Moses, John the Baptist, and the very words and works of Jesus all testify to Jesus' identity. But despite all these credible witnesses, the Jews still refused to believe in Jesus. Ang dami ng patotoo, ang dami ng patunay ang sinabi ni Jesus sa kanila, pero ayaw pa rin nilang maniwala. Matigas ang puso, matigas ang ulo. My dear brothers and sisters, when do we say that a person is hard-headed? Kailan ba natin sinasabi na ang isang tao ay matigas ang ulo? Karaniwan, kapag yung bata ay ayaw sumunod, sasabihin natin, napakatigas naman ang ulo ng batang ito. Kapag yung isang tao ay tinuruan mo ng katotohanan at ayaw pa rin niyang paniwalaan ang katotohanan, yan din katigasan ng ulo. I am a teacher. I teach seminarians, those who are preparing for the priesthood. And just like any teacher, our task is to teach the truth. I-enroll niyo ba ang inyong mga anak sa isang eskwelahang nagtuturo ng mali? Tungkulin ng guro, ng teacher, na ituro ang katotohanan. 
Kaya yung estudyante ay kailangang tanggapin ang katotohanan at sumunod sa katotohanan. If a student does not believe in the truth that the teacher is teaching, then that student is hard-headed. Kapag tinuruan mo na 1 plus 1 ay 2, pero ipinipilit pa rin ng estudyante na 1 plus 1 ay 3, aba, e matigas ang ulo. Ayaw paniwalaan ang katotohanan. My dear brothers and sisters, like the Israelites during the time of Moses, and like the Jews during the time of Jesus, let us admit that many times we are also hard-headed. Maraming beses din na matigas ang ating ulo. And hard-headedness is a sign of arrogance. The failure to accept the truth is a sign of pride. The failure to accept the truth is a failure in humility. Kapag hindi natin kayang tanggapin ang katotohanan, yan ay kayabangan. And that is why the Jews, the Israelites, in our first reading today, created a God for themselves, not just because they want to have a God that they have created, they created a God for themselves because it is a sign that they are rebelling against God and His commandments. By creating a God for themselves, they are saying, we are the ones who are to determine what is true, what is good for us. Walang magdidikta sa amin ng katotohanan. Kami ang magsasabi kung ano ang totoo. At kung ano ang sabihin naming totoo, yun ang paniniwalaan naming totoo. But my dear brothers and sisters, God is truth. And in God, we come face to face with the truth. And when we come face to face with the truth, we simply have to be humble, accept the truth, and live according to the truth. Kaya nga sa ating unang pagbasa ngayon, Dahil sa katigasan ng ulo ng mga tao, ng mga Israelita, na gumawa ng Diyos-Diyosan, sabi ng Diyos kay Moises, Paparusahan ko ang bayang ito. I will punish them for their sins. But Moses pleaded with God. Moses said, You see, Lord, if you punish these people, the Egyptians will say, that you are not really a merciful and compassionate God. Sasabihin ng mga Ehipsyo, kaya pala pinalaya, pinaalis ito dito, mula dito para lamang parusahan. And when God realized the truth that Moses was saying, God changed His mind. Dahil sa katotohan ng sinabi ni Moses, Pati ang Diyos, nagbago ng isip. Hindi kasalanan ang magbago dahil sa katotohanan. Ang kasalanan ay yung ipinamukha na sa iyo ang katotohanan, pero mas pinipili mo pa maniwala sa kasinungalingan. When we come face to face with the truth, let us simply be humble. Let us accept the truth. And let us live according to the truth. Mga minamahal na kapatid, mga nanay, mga tatay, mga brothers, mga sisters, 
mga lolo, mga lola, wag na pong matigas ang ulo. Wag na pong mayabang. Wag na pong ipagpilitan kung ano ang mali. Kapag nakita na po natin ng totoo, tanggapin po natin. Kapag nakita na natin ang katotohanan, tanggapin na po natin. Wag nang matigas ang ulo. Let us not be like the Israelites and the Jews during the time of Jesus. Today, let us ask for the grace of humility. The humility to accept the truth. The humility to allow our lives to be guided by the truth. The humility to decide based on the truth. Please stand. Too often we stray from the Lord's ways. Let us ask Him for the strength to live lives of faith. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christians everywhere may be more fervent in prayer during this Lenten season. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That unbelievers may listen to God's word and be brought to salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That present uncertainties in the church may be resolved by an increase of faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the poor the sick and the handicapped may see God's presence in their lives by the support of their families and friends. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all who are sick, especially those afflicted with COVID-19, and for those who care for them. May the vaccines and medicines, as well as our concern for each other, help end this pandemic let us pray to the lord lord hear our prayer that the dead may reach their eternal home with the help of our prayers let us pray to the lord lord hear our prayer we pray in silence for our personal petitions we remember the people who need our prayers we continue to pray for peace especially in Ukraine, and we pray for the intentions offered in this Mass. Father, enlighten us through the Holy Spirit that we may openly profess our faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Please stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that what we offer in sacrifice may cleanse us in our frailty from every evil, 
and always grant us your protection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for through bodily fasting you restrain our faults, raise up our minds, and bestow both virtue and its rewards through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your Spirit that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth, to become the lasting sign of your covenant, you decide to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The Mystery of Faith when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, the sacrificial victim, who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, 
together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us ask the Father to forgive our sins and to bring us to forgive those who sin against us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from ignorance, from lies, from deception, and from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus Lamb of Christ, God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy that, worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The Body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Please stand. Let us pray. May this sacrament we have received purify us, we pray, O Lord, and grant your servants freedom from all blame, that those bound by a guilty conscience may glory in the fullness of heavenly remedy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. O God, protector of all who hope in you, bless your people, keep them safe, defend them, prepare them, that free from sin and safe from the enemy, they may persevere always in your love through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Santa Maria, Reina ng Salibutan, Nakatakot sa Cruz ni Jesus Christo, Panginoon.